fasting is about justice. It reminds us about those who are less fortunate than ourselves. We also fast because of mourning, because of sadness, because of repentance for sin. Like Muslims overindulge in Ramadan, as this brother is a perfect example of overindulgence. Now, if you're saying that the Father is the Holy Spirit, my question to you is a simple one. To who is the Holy Spirit interceding to? Make me! Make me! Make me! One minute! Make me! I'm trying to tell you. I am not your Dimi, and you are not the Kali. Go on, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I would say in the Bible, it's one one. one So I believe in it. Jesus and I love it. And I justify the reason why. Wait, do you believe in the Trinity? Not in the way which is expressed. What 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 way do you believe in the Trinity? Not in the Trinity. You don't believe in the Trinity. I believe in the oneness of God. I believe to make it as simple and, and as concise as possible. The Father, the easiest way to understand the scripture, the Father and the Holy Spirit are synonymous. Repeat it. The Father and the Holy Spirit are synonymous. And I can prove the point. From the birth of Jesus Christ, okay, the Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and that holy thing, the holy thing that is born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. And that the Holy Spirit shall also indwell the holy thing that is born of thee, in the fullness of the body. Therefore, the Father of Jesus Christ, the flesh. Okay, bro, I heard what you said. You said that you said that the Father is synonymous with the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit is the Father. Right. I, I want to demonstrate because like all heresies, all heresies do not correspond to what the Bible says. So, brother, do you believe in the New Testament? So he believes in the New Testament and the Old Testament. Great. So let's look at this. In the New Testament, it states this. You might want to get out your Bible and follow me. In Romans 8, verses 26 and 27. For in the same way, the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, also helps our weaknesses. For we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groaning too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Now, if you're saying that the Father is the Holy Spirit, my question to you is a simple one. To who is the Holy Spirit interceding to? That is not intercession. Interceding to itself. Just like when he said, just a second, there it Just like when he said, the beginning, let's go to the beginning of Genesis. When he said, let us make man in our own image and likeness. I said, in the express image and likeness created man. Okay, express image and likeness. At the end of the day, all that was produced was one single being. That's not true. No, just a second, just a second. Just a second. Adam was the only being that was produced. And he said, it is not good for man to be alone. So that means to say it was only one singular being. Right, so allow me to reply. Firstly, the brother's argument is that the Holy Spirit is interceding to himself. Now, anyone who does even a rudimentary study of the Greek knows that intercession is between two parties. There is a person that is being interceded for, a person that is being interceded to, and then someone who does the intercession. That the oneness theology that this brother holds to makes a mockery of the language. 
because he's saying that the Holy Spirit is interceding to himself, but the Bible doesn't say that. Listen carefully. In the same way, the Spirit helps our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray, we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us, for us, with groanings too deep for words. And he, and he, are you listening? Do you even believe in the New Testament? And he who searches the hearts knows the mind of the Spirit. So let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. If the Holy Spirit is interceding to himself, which, wait, 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 I am finished. Who is the one searching the mind of the Spirit? Who is the one searching the mind of the Spirit? Not my question. Okay. The spirit that is interceding is the spirit that is in the believer. On the day of Pentecost, he is speaking. Some people are speaking in tongues, and they grunt. I speak in tongues. Grunt and you grunt before you become. Not my question. No, no, just, no, just I'm showing you which spirit is interceding. That spirit is searched by her. And when I'm praying and when I'm interceding, I grunt and I bend under the. Still not my question. Yeah? So that is the spirit. That no, is the question, listen. Listen carefully to the words of the New Testament. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is. So let's break down this. One second. Work with me, bro. Let's do this linguistically. Right. And he who searches the hearts, who are the hearts referring to? Our hearts. Great. Who is the he that knows those hearts referring to? The Spirit. Now listen, this is why it doesn't make sense to the text. And he who searches the hearts knows the mind of the Spirit. So who is he who knows the mind of the Spirit? Holy Spirit, and the Spirit that is given on the day of Pentecost, okay, that is in every believer who accepts Jesus Christ as Savior, baptizing them with the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, and grunting and groaning under the weight of the Spirit, okay, that is the search. Okay, right, guys, I'm going to read this text in two ways. I'm going to read it in a Trinitarian way first, and then I'm going to read it in a oneness way, which is this brother's position, and you decide which one makes more sense of the text. And I'm going to insert Father, Son and Holy Spirit, depending on who the text is referring to when I do it as a Trinitarian, and then I'm just going to insert Holy Spirit in the way that this brother suggests. So the Trinitarian way first. In the same way, the Holy Spirit helps our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Holy Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And the Father who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Holy Spirit is, because the Holy Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of the Father. Now, Let's read it in the oneness Pentecostal way, or the oneness way. And just see what a nonsense it makes of the text. In the same way, the Holy Spirit also helps our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Holy Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And the Holy Spirit, who searches the hearts, knows what the mind of the Holy Spirit is, because the Holy Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of the Holy Spirit. Who is he interceding to? My spirit that is given to me, like the apostle on the day of Pentecost, is interceding, okay? So so we've got two there. Yeah, yeah, no, no. My spirit that is poured out on the day of Pentecost. Tarry here until the spirit. So is the Holy Spirit interceding to someone else or himself? The Holy Spirit that is poured out on the day of Pentecost. Is it interceding for to another or to himself? It is interceding to God in the spirit. Ah, so, no, to God. God, the Holy Spirit. No, yeah. God just. So not so the Holy Spirit is interceding to another. No. You're a step closer to Trinity, bro. You're a step closer to Trinity. The Holy Spirit is full of Carry here until you receive the Holy Spirit. So there's more than one spirit. 
the Holy Spirit is calling on the day of Pentecost to keep us and empower us. Now that spirit runs and grown under the burden. Okay, I'm wait on Great, I got that, but who's he interceding to? God, who is spirit. So, 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 so spirit, wait one second. We are spiritual beings. So the Holy Spirit is interceding to someone else. We agree. The Holy Spirit, yeah, on the day of Pentecost. Great. The Holy Spirit is interceding to the most. This is a Trinitarian view. The Holy Spirit intercedes to the Father. Yes, the Holy Spirit come proceeds from the Father. Yes, the Holy Spirit is poured out. So wait, oh, I thought you said they were the same person. No, 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 no. So they're not the same person. There we go. So the Brother, you've just shot yourself in the foot. No, no, it's one, spirit. one second, one second. He's just said that the Holy Spirit is communing. Yes, Communion comes from the Greek word koinonia, and it's about group. It's about people coming together. It's about people. So, so this is the Trinitarian view, brother. One second. The Trinitarian view is that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one God. Now, just logically, do you agree with me that the essence of God can be nothing else other than God? God is, God. God, God is an office. I'll ask you again. Do you agree or disagree that the essence of God, the thing that God is, can not be anything other than God? And I'm going to repeat this again. I'm listen. God is an office, like I said, king. So God is an office. It's an office he holds. He's an office. He's so he's not a being. Do you believe he's a being? He's a spiritual being. He's light. Right. So that also being. So that God. being. One second. That being. You. Because the thing is, brother, I. There's. There's a problem with what you're saying. The problem with what you're saying is a. It doesn't match with what scripture teaches, and b. It doesn't even make semantic sense. Linguistically, you can't say that the Father, Son and Holy Spirit are all the same person and then use words like advocate, intercessor, intermediary and communion. All of these words necessitate that the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit are not the same person. But how are they one? How are they one? Because we Christians believe absolutely in one God. The essence of the Father the, 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 the being of God cannot be anything other than God, agreed? God is an office. I, the, I'm not talking about his office. All right, we'll just pretend. We'll just pretend. I'm a father, I'm a son, I'm a brother. One I'm second. A I'm a friend, I'm a neighbor, and I'm an enemy. I'm one being. I'm a spiritual being. Which doesn't make sense of the text. I'm showing the reality. All right. When my spirit moves my body, Okay, I am dead. Just like when Jesus gave up his spirit. Listen to his logic. I am a father, I am a son, I am a spirit. How does that match this? For what the law could do not, what the law could do, sorry, what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did. Sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Now let me ask you this question. Did the Father send the Son, or did the Father come Himself? The Father is the Holy Spirit. Came upon Mary, fertilized the egg, and then dwelt. And that holy thing that is born of you shall be called the Son of God. Are you saying Jesus isn't God the Father? God, listen to me now. The holy thing that is born of Mary shall be called the Son of God. The Son of the Spirit. If anybody had to pay maintenance money for Jesus Christ, it would have to be the Holy Spirit. Brother, you're, 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 you're contradicting the I'm scriptures themselves. No, no. Do you? I'm just asking you. I'm trying to understand your position. Okay. 
And brother, I, I'm encouraging you. Yeah, but brother, and I love you, and this is why I tarry with you now, because you are in error. And your error, your error, ex if, if, you, if you are adamant, if you are adamant, if you are adamant that the Father is the Son, do you believe that? So you're saying that the Father is the Holy Spirit. No, I just, brother, I'm just asking you a simple question. And it's important because if you don't believe in the triune God, you have the wrong Jesus, which means you have the wrong spirit. So, so I am testing it. And what I'm finding is someone who's in peril. What I'm finding is someone who is in peril. Your position, I want to understand it. You have equated the Father and the Holy Spirit as if they are the same. Synonymous. Even though the scriptures say that the Holy Spirit intercedes to the Father. What is an intercessor? You're doing a Jehovah's Witness trick. No, 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 I deal with them all the time. Yeah, but this is a this is a Jehovah's Witness trick. No, no, no. You're jumping to another verse. Deal with this verse in Romans 8. Do you no, do you believe in Romans 8, 26 and 27? Listen again. Listen carefully. Right. So, okay. And he who searches hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he, the Holy Spirit, intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Let me ask you a very simple question. What is an intercessor? Brilliant. So if one second... Right, let me, let me, let me, let me, I will, I will answer your question. I will answer your question, but then I want you to address my question. Because you're just jumping around it, bro. You're just jumping around it. Jesus Christ is an advocate to the Father. But he said, but he said that, no, you're not listening. Read John 14 to John 16. John say, Jesus says that I will pray to the Father and the Father will send another advocate. Another advocate is not the same as the one. You're not even listening. You're not even listening. Another advocate is not the same as the one that is saying another advocate. They are two different advocates. You said that an intercessor is one who intercedes to another on behalf of another. If the Holy Spirit is an intercessor to God the Father, that means that the Holy Spirit is not God the Father. Because if he was God the Father, he's not an intercessor to God the Father. He's just talking to himself. Asking you to deal with the word intercessor. Christ intercedes for us. Christ prayed to the Spirit, the flesh of Mary, prayed to the Spirit. I am a spiritual being, you are a spiritual, spiritual being. And when your spirit leaves you, you are dead. The Holy Spirit that dwells inside of us shall quickly. Do you, do you believe? You're, st you're still not answering my question. The Holy Spirit that dwells inside of you, okay, shall keep my body. That also do intercession on behalf of the Almighty and other people when I pray to the Father, who is the Spirit of the Great Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is interceding to the Father. Yeah, my Spirit, my Spirit, that is called. No, 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 hold on, it doesn't say your Spirit. One second. The New Testament teaches there is only one Spirit, agreed? Do you so? So are you saying that your the spirit in you is not the same divine Holy Spirit? Oh, it is. Is that one divine Holy? Is that one divine Holy Spirit divided? It, that it that it that it is that it is a different Holy Spirit in each of us. Thank you. So it's the same Holy Spirit. Thank you. Brilliant. So there's one Spirit who intercedes to the Father. Agreed. Do you agree? Do you agree that the Holy Spirit intercedes to the Father? Oh my gosh. 
So, brother, brother, you're stuck on this mantra. All right, so the Holy Spirit is given out in small measure. Brilliant. Let's move on. Now answer the question I'm asking. Does that Holy Spirit that's poured out in little measures amongst all of us, like a little drop of wine in little cups, does it intercede to the Father? Which is the main spirit, yes. Thank you. If it intercedes to the Father, then it is not the Father. Perfect. It can't be the Father. Because how can it intercede to the Father if it was the Father? Yo, let's talk about... Listen, listen, just a second. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. So in that wise, I can say, okay, I can quench the spirit. I can use the spirit to intercede to the greater spirit. Because the spirit is subject to the prophet. The spirit and the greater spirit. There, you've just used the linguistics of two. No, 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 I'm just saying that you know, to the Father. Because I could say to the Father, but I'm just right. using that. The spirit that is called, is I think I think it's important. To see it to the Father, I think it's important. To the Father, which is I think it's okay. important to move this conversation forward. So I want to go on to explain as Christians how we see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as one and the same being. Okay? So we Christians, unlike the heterodox oneness theology, the oneness Pentecostals and those like Unitarians and Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons who deny the Trinity, the reason why they are outside of the faith is because they deny the Trinity. The Trinity is this. We as Christians believe that the essence of God, that thing that is God, cannot be anything other than God himself. So God the Father, from his own essence, has begotten the Son eternally, without beginning, without end. And because the genus of the Son is begotten of the essence of the Father, the Son is divine. Not a separate God, not a God with partners, not someone that is the Father, because the Father cannot beget himself and still be the Father. The very act of being begotten means that there is a Son who is not the Father, and so the Son is distinct from the Father. And because the Father has been eternally the Father, it means that the Son is eternally the Son. So Father and Son are both eternal, and their essence is the one undivided essence of the Father, and thus, because of that, the Son is also divine. The Holy Spirit proceeds from the essence of the Father. The essence of the Father is God, and so the Holy Spirit is also divine. But the Father does not proceed from himself. The Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father, and so the Holy Spirit is not the Father, the Son is not the Father, but they are one in essence, one divinity, one divine. This is what we as Christians believe, bro. Brother, if you deny the Trinity, you're not a Christian. You're not a Christian. You're not a Christian. You got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You got the Lamb, okay? You got the Good Shepherd, you got the True Vine, okay? You got the Husbandman, okay? You got the Rock, this is all Jesus' titles, offices, okay? Why pick the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Why not say the Lion of the Tribe of Judah? I baptize the name of the Lion of the Tribe of Judah, and the Lamb of God, and the Stem of Jesse. Because all these are offices. God is an office. Jesus Christ is God, Emmanuel, God with us. And if he's not Emmanuel, God with us. The name Emmanuel needs to be fulfilled. Did God send himself? God sent his son. There we go. Listen, listen. God, listen. God sent his son. God sent his son. Listen. God sent his son that he came up on Mary and put on So is the son, is the son the father? The son, I'm gonna make it very simple. No Muslim language. Is the, I'm just asking you a simple question. Is the son the father? No. Great. So just a second, listen. Is the Holy Spirit the father? 
the sun is the temple of the living God in all his fullness. Brother, you don't know Christianity, no, bro. Christian. Listen, my brother. I agree, we, you're not Christian. The sun is the temple. But you don't. Destroy this temple. You destroy this temple and in three days I shall rise back. Is Jesus, is Jesus God? Of course he's God. Only God. Great. So is, so if, wait, if you've said, brother, brother, if I have to share, brother, brother. So, no, no, brother, you, brother, you're in heterodoxy. You're in error, brother. You're in heterodoxy. Come to the faith of the church, bro. Come to the church that come to the church that has existed for two thousand years, that has believed in the Trinity for two thousand years. Your doctrines, your doctrines. He says that. Oh dear. Oh dear. You see, he doesn't believe. Brother, you don't believe. Do you not believe in the words of Jesus? Okay, guys. He says that the church never baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He contradicts Jesus Christ himself. This guy thinks that he knows better than Jesus. Because Jesus says this in Matthew 28. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Did he say, baptize them in the name of Jesus? No, he did not say that. He said, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's Catholic. That's Catholic. No, it isn't. It's Christian. All Christians believe it. No, let's be clear. He says, the sister there said, go to Acts. God bless you. Do you want to ask a question? Because this guy's dominated. Are you wanting to ask any questions? I totally understand what you're saying. I agree. It was really lovely. God bless you. I hope you got something good. Sorry? The best trans I, I personally use the NASB. But I think there's multiple. I think the best thing to do is to get yourself quite high level translations that are aimed at a, a high reading age. So the NASB is one, uh, Bible.net is another, um, the Jerusalem translation is another. These are good translations, they are, they're quite a high level of reading. And I would use multiple translations, not just one. All right, God bless you, peace with you. So, guys. We've heard this argument again and again and again from people who say, go to the book of Acts. They say, they say, go to the book of Acts. Because in the book of Acts, it says that they baptize in the name of the Lord. It says that they baptize. And the thing is, it uses, they, it says they baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then it says they baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the fact of the matter is, Luke does not use a consistent formula for baptism in the book of Acts. I'm just going to talk to you guys. If you want, want to stand clear. So I'm going to speak to you guys because this guy's just talking to himself now. So the book of Acts uses things like baptize in the name of Jesus, baptize in the name of Jesus Christ, baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus. The fact of the matter is what Luke is telling you there is that he doesn't use a consistent formula for baptism. Why? Because he's not giving a formula for baptism. He's giving a shorthand. He's just using shorthand rather than having to write out the lengthy baptized in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost each time. The Gospel of Matthew 28 is clear. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. As evidence to that point, because I'm not going to talk to this bro any longer because he just doesn't listen. In this, as evidence to that point, I want to bring forward the Didache. The Didache is one of the earliest Christian books after the New Testament itself. The Didache uses this statement. In part 7, sorry, yeah, in section 7a it reads, 
The procedure for baptizing is as follows. And it's 90 AD, so it's written at the time of the New Testament. The New Testament he doesn't believe in. The New Testament that he ignores when it says baptize in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. The procedure for baptizing is as follows. After repeating all that has been said, immerse in running water in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now, it's very clear. The earliest Christians understood the tradition of baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Bear in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that the earliest Christians were not walking around with a New Testament with a New Testament under their armpit. <clears throat> they weren't walking around with a New Testament under their armpit. So someone might have a Gospel of Matthew, but not a Gospel of Luke. Or they might have the Book of Acts, but not the Book of John. So when Christians were baptizing and doing baptism, the Didache is basing this on a living tradition. But, Listen to what else the Didache says. In section 9, section E, it says the following. No one is to drink, no one is to eat or drink of your Eucharist, but those who have been baptized in the name of the Lord, which is exactly what it says in the book of Acts, demonstrating that the name of the Lord, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus, as it appears in the book of Acts, is a shorthand for what it says in Matthew 28. Because that sister is how the early Christians used it as well. So there's no point saying go to the book of Acts, because the book of Acts is using the same lingua franca as the Didache. Sorry? What about it? So what? We Christians fast for 40 days. Big deal. We could teach you about fasting. You don't know anything you're talking about. You're, to you're talking total rubbish, mate. Rubbish. You're talking complete and utter rubbish. Complete and utter rubbish. We Christians, we Christians, sorry, excuses. We Christians, bro. We Christians fast in Lent. It's 40 days long. We Christians fast in Advent. That's 40 days long. That's 80 days right there. We Christians fast. We Christians fast regularly on Wednesdays and Fridays. We Christians fast more than you Muslims. We could teach you about fasting. But the difference is, the difference is, during Ramadan, you Muslims eat more, not less. Food consumption goes up in the Middle East. It doesn't decrease. So it's 30 days of feasting, not 30 days of fasting. Try and kill someone, try and kid someone who doesn't know about Islam, bro. Why are you fasting? Why are you? A good question. That's a good question. No, it's a fair question. Why do Christians fast? Christians fast for multiple reasons, but it's innately connected to prayer. We Christians fast to accompany our prayers before God. When we're interceding for something, when we're asking God for something, we fast. We also fast because fasting is about justice. It reminds us about those who are less fortunate than ourselves. We also fast because of mourning, because of sadness, because of repentance for sin. So we fast as a way of repenting for our sin. We fast for prayer, we fast for justice, we fast for sin. These are the reasons why Christians fast. There's all... Great question. Wait, hold on. He's asking a fair question and a good question. So I want to answer his question. Right. If it's the same question, you can... If it's the same question, there's no reason for you to repeat it. So in terms of... In terms of um, just how we fast. So again, there's different ways of fasting. So some Christians have do the Jesus fast, which is you go without food completely for 40 days. Right? You ever done that? Hard. Don't do it. Seek medical advice first. That's one way of fasting. Another way of fasting. I'm just, wait, do you want to hear the answer to your question? Do you want to hear the answer to your question? So another way that Christians fast is we have one meal a day. You can have that meal at any time, but that's the only meal you're having. You're not having another one. 
So you could have it at 12 o'clock in the afternoon with the sun highest in the sky, but you don't eat again until the next 24 hour block. Yeah? Another way we fast, another way that we fast, another way we fast is we, we do veganism. So we give up meat, we give up milk, we give up poultry, and we reduce our diet to grains, vegetables, and fruit. That's another way that Christians fast. Christians have different ways of fasting. We don't just have one way of fasting. Where did you get it from? What, sorry? Where did you get it from? We get it from the, the prophets and the apostles. So when you look in the Bible, you see all these different ways of fasting. And, and we, we, you, you take from them. You got it from the Old Testament, isn't it? The Old and New Testament. Old and New Testament. What, sorry? Uh, in the Quran, the, yep. uh, if you want, we are, we are, we are, I see, when you come from Ramadan, we are seeing, uh, the, yeah, the beginning of the month. Yeah. But here's the, here's the thing, bro, I would suggest to you guys, and I'm going to make an assumption here, I've been caught out making assumptions before, but I'm going to assume from what the, the, the comments you're making that you guys are Muslims. Your fasting is one of the evidences that I give to demonstrate that Islam is a false religion. Because in the Quran, how does it say that you should fast? Why you all cat got your tongue? It's not. It's not the Quran. It's the Sunnah. Okay. So how does it say you should fast? Brilliant. So how does it say you should fast? So how does it say you should fast? Sunrise to sunset. Brilliant. Now this demonstrates. This this demonstrates. Fantastic. This demonstrates. This demonstrates why Muhammad is a false prophet. Because Muhammad said, you don't fast between sunrise, sorry, you fast between sunrise and sunset. So what do you do in Greenland when the sun only rises twice a year? Muhammad was a seventh century Bedouin who didn't know that the earth was round. He didn't know. Let me, let me finish my point. Let me finish. No, we Christians don't have that rule. So how do you do that? We don't, you didn't listen, did you? Yeah, I did. So what did I say? Did I say we have to fast between sunrise and sunset? I didn't, did I? They go by, 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 uh, by time. No, we go by, no, listen, listen to the way that we fast. We go by the foods you eat and the amount of food you eat. That is how Christians fast. The food you eat and the amount of food you eat. The time, the time has got nothing to do with it. So when Muhammad said, you can only fast between sunrise and sunset, between sunrise and sunset. Do you want to listen to what I'm saying? Right, so your prophet didn't know the earth was a sphere. And so he didn't know that the sun doesn't rise and doesn't set in Greenland. So by saying rise between sunrise and sunset, he proved that he was getting nothing from God that God wasn't speaking to him and that this isn't the revelation from God. By comparison, I'm just talking to anyone who's listening because you're not. By comparison, by comparison, Christians, Christians link, one second, Christians link, Christians link, Christians link our fasting not to the rising and the setting of the sun as a 7th century Bedouin did. We fast according to the amount of food you eat and the type of food you eat. When you eat it is irrelevant. So the same criticism doesn't apply to Christianity, but it does apply to Islam. Okay, so you came late. Let me ask, yes, let me answer that question. Right. No, let me answer his question. Let me answer his question. Let me answer his question. So let me answer his question. But something tells me I'm not going to be able to answer the question before he interrupts. The question is, why do we fast? I'll go back to what I said to this brother. Maybe you missed it because he asked the same question earlier. That's fine. So, why do Christians fast? Is it, is it to work our way into heaven? No. Why? Because Jesus has paid our way into heaven. It's not about that. So you're wrong. The reason why Christ... Oh, look, he's not listening to the answer. What a surprise. What a surprise. So the reasons why we fast, I'll give you the, the reasons in scripture. One. We fast because we are mourning our sin. We're mourning the things that we have done wrong. We're mourning the fact that we have sinned. Two, two, one finish. Let me finish, let me finish. Second reason, 
Second reason is because fasting is connected to intercessionary prayer. When we are asking God, when we are supplicating God for something, we fast to accompany our prayers. Three, 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 we fast. We fast because, um, sorry, I've lost my train of thought now. We fast because intercession, mourning for sin, and for justice, there we go. We fast because of the cause of justice, justice, to remember the poor. These are the ways that we fast. These, these are the reasons that we fast. If you don't do all these things, do you still go to paradise? Yes. Because, 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 exactly, exactly. I'm, I'm glad you understand. Because fasting, because fasting makes you a better person in this world. Fasting makes you a better person in this world. So, 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 I will answer your question. Let me answer this question. No, triggered, triggered, triggered. It's always the same when you have a conversation with Muslims. Always the same, always the same, always the same. What did I listen to? I answered your question. I'm going to, what, sorry? I yeah, will answer your question. Calm down. No, you're rude. Yes. But this guy is so rude. You're being rude to him. No, no. I was going to go talk to him. I don't want to. So let me let me address let me address his question. Let me address his question. Yeah, I'll give you a minute. I'll give you a minute. Don't worry. I'll give you a minute. I'll give you a minute. Give you a minute. Great gangster. Great gangster. Great gangster. So, guys, guys. So he asked the question: Why do we fast? Why do we fast? Why do we fast if it doesn't do anything? If Jesus paid your sins, because it makes you a better person in this life. Did you hear that? Oh, you disagree. You're right. Well, you're disagreeing with the God of the prophets and the apostles. That's not my problem. That's your problem. But Islam is a false religion. Right, go on. So, now, the question. Your, your question. Your question. Let me answer his question. God bless you. I don't want to hear The your question, answer. brother. I don't want to oh, hear Oh, so he asked me a question, he but he doesn't want he to hear answer. the answer. Who are you talking what was the question? Who are you the talking question to? is what is Who fasting? That was the question. Who are you talking so to? I'll tell you Who what you fasting is. Who are you talking the to? fasting right for a Christian. Right, right so let me at, so stop uh, shouting then and let me answer the question. So stop shouting. Or I'll just have to me? shout over you. Do you remember me? So, do, what do you the question me? was, do you, me? you see, he doesn't want to do answer. Me? He doesn't want to hear. So I'm going to speak to everyone else because he's not even listening to the answer to his own question. So, the question is, what is fasting? That's his question. That was his question. No, that was his question. You'll wait, I'm answering his question. So, the question is, the question is, what is fasting? You don't remember me. You don't fasting me. for a Christian, he could just walk away. He doesn't want to talk, but he's just stood here. Fasting for a Christian is to uphold justice, to remember the poor, to do right by the orphan, to do right by the widow, to care for those who are weak. That is true fasting before Yahweh. Fasting, 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 the discipline of fasting, the discipline of fasting is to abstain from overindulgence in food. You don't remember me. Like Muslims overindulge in Ramadan. As yeah, this brother is a perfect me. example yeah, of overindulgence. I'll, I'll talk to anyone I you want. can tell that this brother feasts in Ramadan <laughs> and doesn't fast in Ramadan. <laughs> His <laughs> idea of fasting that's, that's is 30 time. days of that's feasting. He, said last time. he didn't know me. He insulted me. That's Muslims, what he didn't want to talk to this guy. Muslims to this have 30 guy. days of fasting in Ramadan. Not 30 days of fasting. They have 30 days. Of, of feasting. Camera. No, exactly. Studies You're in lost. the Middle East You're demonstrate that food You're consumption in the Arab Muslim You're world goes up during Ramadan.
Adam. Your voice above me, like it's you can. all destroyed last virtue you signaling you nonsense. Couldn't you couldn't talk. You couldn't, virtue you couldn't signaling nonsense. Yeah. Now, brother, what was your question? Allah is not a mouse. If I'm a gay person, yes. and I don't repent, yes. what am I doing to hell or to paradise? So, so, the, question the, question is, the question is, funny, I'm just about to. The question is, do homosexuals that do not repent go to hell? The Bible is clear. That those who practice homosexuality and do not repent will be judged by God and will suffer the punishment that comes with that. Hell. Answer your question. Now answer my question. I've got a question for you now. I've got a question. And you maybe could help him. And you, Alu Akbar boy, you yeah. maybe could I'm help him. Here. So yeah. here's my question here. and I'm to, you again. to the Muslims. I'm to you again. Yeah. And I'm you believe... Everything I say is a yes, now. I want you to want ask to you me. a question. You to me. Yeah. So here's yeah. my you question. Are you listening? Yeah. Thank you. I'm just yeah. going to talk to you because this brother's like off on one. Too much coffee. So, so brother, you believe... You believe... So I'm cutting you, you off believe right now. I'm cutting that you off Muhammad right now. was a you prophet, try to right? You know me. You try that to God was like talking you know to him, right? You try to talk so like why you know does me. Muhammad you know command you know that you should you fast know. when the sun rises and sets, when the sun doesn't rise and set everywhere in the world? He doesn't want to do it. He doesn't want to do it. You got destroyed. You got destroyed because you don't, don't want to talk to me. Fair enough. Yeah? That's all right. You're honest. So the question was. Yeah, the question said, was, yeah, but you got destroyed. Yeah. if Allah you, is truly a prophet you. of God, yeah. why, why did God yeah. not come, tell him come. that the sun come. doesn't rise and come, set man. everywhere come, in the world? Come in it. Because Bro, Muhammad said, like talking about Muhammad, Muhammad, like Muhammad said you need to shut that you mouth. should yeah, fast you with the talk. rising yeah. and the setting of the sun. So what Look does a Muslim like do in Greenland where the sun Muhammad doesn't now. rise and the do shit. sun doesn't he set he asked you, you told to him. anyone you with a answer. brain? This is a proof that Muhammad is not from God. You didn't hear nothing. Did not you hear didn't from nothing. God that God was not That's speaking to Muhammad. I'm proving his personality that he can't. By contrast. He never listened. Bro, I tried to ask him a simple question. By contrast. We Christians believe that fasting is connected oh, look, he's his to the food he's his that you eat because he be and the amount of food that you eat. It has nothing to do with the rising and the setting of the sun. Go on, did you have something to say? Now he calmed down. Did you have the Did you have something to say? The well, mic has been with me, yeah, and this guy, or, uh, he thinks he can talk. The... I'm embarrassing myself, You're bro. Talking this about guy, you don't, you don't know him. Islam. I don't know him. Okay. You don't know me. Yeah, you try to keep sure. You're talking about what? something else. Okay. Always you're talking about Muslims. So do you want me to answer that? Yeah. So you got to listen to the answer then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The brother is asking, yeah. why am I speaking yeah. about Muhammad yeah. and yeah. Islam? Everybody. So allow me to answer then. Listen to me. Do you see he doesn't want to listen? He asks a question. He doesn't want to listen to the answer. He asks a question. He doesn't want to listen to the answer. So allow me to answer this brother's question. I have been speaking, brother, about Christianity, brother, for two hours before this brother brother came, before this brother came and demanded that I speak about Islam because he came in saying, we Muslims fast during Ramadan. We Muslims fast during Ramadan. You Christians don't fast. 
So that's why I'm now speaking about Ramadan. And then another Muslim asked me a question about why we fast. And then he attacked the Christian faith. Muslims, read it and weep. Suck it up and deal with it. If you attack the Christian faith, we are going to attack the Islamic faith. If you don't want us to attack Islam, stop attacking Christianity. Okay. Okay. Don't okay. sulk okay. like okay. children okay. when we expose okay. your prophet okay. as a false prophet because he was okay. ignorant okay. about the world. Okay. If you are going to attack okay. to the Christian mouth. faith, go on, bro. Make me. Listen. Make me. Make me. Make me. One minute. Make me. I'm trying to tell you. I am you not your Dimi, and you are not the Kali. Ladies and gentlemen, if Islam dominates, this is what will happen in the streets of England. The brother is trying to suppress freedom of speech in the home of freedom of speech and he is doing it because of Islam. We have to resist Islam because these are the fruits of Islam. Even if the Muslims want you to shut up. Killed Jesus that I should be attacking the Jews today. Is that your argument? Who's killing Christians in Pakistan? Muslims. Who killed two million Christians in South Sudan? Muslims. Who killed 10,000 Christians in Nigeria? Muslims. Who killed Christians in Syria? Muslims. Who killed the Armenian Christians? 1.2 million. Muslims. Who is in the port attacking the Christian faith? Muslims. So yes, I can attack Islam. So go on. Anyway, he's here to preach to the churches are empty. That's why he came here to preach. So, since they're talking to one another, since we're talk, since he's talking to one another, do you want to pick up the camera? Anyone who wants to listen to me, we're heading that way. If you want to these three have a conversation, stay here. Come with me. Come with me. Come with me, bro.